What's going on guys? Adam here from Texas Garage and this week I've been driving the 2019 Volkswagen Atlas. Now the skies are about to open up and a storm is coming so we're going to hit the outside as quickly as possible then jump in and uh, get this review going. Let's do it. So any of you that have been following along with me for a while watching my reviews or follow me on Instagram, you probably know I own a 2018 Volkswagen Atlas. I made a whole video called Putting Your Money Where Your Mouth Is about me buying that vehicle and why I bought it. What's going on guys? The title of this video is putting your money where your mouth is. And that's exactly what I've done. So I do think it means a lot that this is a vehicle that I've reviewed and we really liked when I was driving it. And I'm taking that and actually buying one for my family. This one is the 2019 Atlas, and there have been a few improvements over what I bought, and we're definitely going over why I still really love this SUV for families. First, let's talk about trim levels. The Atlas comes in an S, an SE, and an SEL. The S is the base and comes in a two liter turbocharged engine. Now, the one that I bought was an S, with a V6 engine, and by everything that I was looking at online, they no longer offer the V6 in the S trim level without all-wheel drive. So you can get the 4Motion S with the V6, and then the SE and SEL all come with the V6. The very top of the line of the Atlas is the SEL Premium, and you can also get the R-Line trim in the SE and SEL, and I did a video on the R-Line as well. I really like that package. You should check that one out. I'll definitely have links down in the description if you want to check out those videos. All right, and let's check out the exterior of this vehicle. Like I said, this is the base S trim level, so you're not getting any bells and whistles here. You do get silver roof rails. You also get LED headlights and LED daytime running lights. And these have an automatic mode, which my S for 2018 does not have. Another new feature for 2019 are rain sensing windshield wipers. You get body colored side mirrors. And the side mirrors here also have a heated function. And on this base trim, you get these 18 inch five spoke alloy wheels. On the upper trims, you can get up to 20s. But these 18 inch wheels definitely make the ride feel smoother. All right, and overall, I really like the design of the Atlas. I like the more boxy, bigger looking shape that it has. This blue is really unique and I quite like it. But let's talk a little bit about the dimensions of this thing to get a perspective of just how big it is. So the overall length of the Atlas is 198.3 inches. The wheelbase is 117.3 inches. The width is 78.3 inches. Ground clearance is eight inches. The total curb weight is 4,222 pounds. And the max payload is 1,213 pounds. All right, so under the hood here is a two liter four cylinder turbocharged engine. This pushes 235 horsepower and 258 foot pounds of torque. That's matched up to an eight speed automatic transmission with Tiptronic and sport modes. And with the four cylinder, there is no tow package available or tow rating available. So in contrast, the biggest difference between my vehicle and this is under the hood. I have the V6. It's a 3.6 liter V6 engine that pushes 276 horsepower and 266 foot pounds of torque. Also hooked up to an eight speed automatic transmission. You can get the towing package on that and it tows up to 5,000 pounds. As far as fuel economy goes, the four cylinder will get you 20 miles per gallon city and 26 miles per gallon highway. The V6 is rated at 17 miles per gallon city and 24 miles per gallon highway. So essentially, if you're looking for the best fuel economy, the four cylinder is your best option, but it is only offered in the S trim. If you're looking for towing and more power, the V6 is the way to go. All 
All right, now let's take a look at the rear of the vehicle. Talk about one of the number one reasons why I bought this vehicle. If you have a large family, in my case, four kids, they're always doing different activities. You always have a different number of people in this vehicle and you want to be able to maximize the space that you have. You definitely want to be able to put as much in the back as possible, whether that be chairs and soccer equipment or baseball equipment. You can put ice chests back here for going to the beach or the lake. So for family vehicles, size matters and rear cargo matters. Now you could fold down the third row and fold down the second row and you get 96.8 cubic feet of cargo volume. With just the third row folded down, you get 55.5 cubic feet. And with all the seats up just behind the third row, you get 20.6 cubic feet of cargo volume. Now contrast that to things like the Nissan Pathfinder that has 16.2 cubic feet, the Dodge Durango that has 17.2 cubic feet, or even the new Hyundai Palisade, which has 18 cubic feet. This has more room behind the third row than any of those and a lot more on the market. This is one of the best bang for the buck as far as size goes for family vehicles. And that's why I bought it. So let's check out the third row and see how it is for an adult. Getting into the third row is pretty easy. We've got a handle up here that folds us forward, pushes up, so there's a lot of space to climb on in. All right, so getting into the third row is pretty easy. One of the other family SUVs that I think does this really well is the Pathfinder with its uh, seat that folds up and pushes forward. This one kind of folds forward and then pushes forward, but you get a really good gap to climb in. Now the second row can slide forward and backwards to give the third row occupants a little bit more knee room. I'm 6'1 and I got headroom back here but not a lot of knee room. If the second row is pushed forward, I could definitely manage, but it wouldn't be a very comfortable ride. Kids, on the other hand, have no problems. As a matter of fact, a lot of times when I'm testing other three row SUVs, the kids will actually ask if we can take our vehicle, the Atlas, instead of the vehicles that I'm reviewing because the back seats are too cramped for them. So it definitely gets a thumbs up back here. Now, as far as the second row goes, there is a ton of room. Me as a 6'1 adult definitely has no problem sitting back here. The seats are really comfortable. You have plenty of headroom and plenty of leg room. And again, your seat can adjust forward and back to help give the back passengers a little bit more room if necessary. The great thing is, is even having a car seat here, you can push these seats forward and get in without removing or disturbing the car seat. Of course, you don't want your kid in there when you do this and then putting it back is as easy as that. All right, and with that, let's move along to the front seats. Now, as you could tell with the S, you get these Titan black cloth seats. So I quite like leather and leather seats and nice interiors, but for this family car, these cloth seats have done really well for me. This is basically the same setup inside as my vehicle. And I definitely recommend if you're on a budget, the S is still a really good solid vehicle. You do get a dual zone climate control that's front passengers and rear passengers and you get vents up here in the front, the second row, and the third row. You do get six-way adjustable seats but they are manual adjustments, no power seats in the S trim. All right and that brings us to the technology in here starting with a 6.5 inch touchscreen display. This gives you VW's CarNet app control. So it's a pretty easy and intuitive system and I haven't had any big issues with it. And it has Apple CarPlay and Android Auto integration. So I basically run Apple CarPlay the majority of the time that I'm in my own vehicle. You do only get one USB port up front, but you do get a 12 volt accessory charger up here and in the second row. As well as hooking up through USB, you also get Bluetooth integration so you can stream your music through Bluetooth. And you also get a rear view camera that displays on this 6.5 inch screen. Now one of the big updates for 2019 is they gave this S trim a lot more of the tech and safety features that the higher trims got for 2018. 
So this has a lot of things in it that mine didn't have, including a blind spot monitoring system, forward collision warning, and autonomous emergency braking, rear traffic alert, and pedestrian monitoring, as well as a lot more. Alright, so driving wise, I'll admit, when I was buying my vehicle, I didn't want the four cylinder, I didn't trust the four cylinder turbo to have enough power or feel strong enough. I wanted the V6, top of the line engine, bottom of the line trim. But after driving this one for a full week, I probably would make the same decision. I'm definitely a lot less cautious about the four cylinder engine. I think it produces just enough power for this big thing, even loaded down with the family. You do get better fuel economy, and I don't really tow anything, so the towing doesn't matter that much to me, at least at this point. So even though I would still buy the V6, I could definitely recommend this four-cylinder turbo if you're looking for this base model to get into this big vehicle for the cheapest price possible. This one, just like the V6, does have the start-stop system. So when you come to a complete stop, the engine will shut off. And when you start going again, the engine will kick back on. I personally usually turn that off first thing when I get in my vehicle. It's great for the fuel savings, but it's not quick enough to kick back on sometimes. It's a little bit loud. It shakes the car when it kicks back on. There's definitely other vehicles with better start-stop systems. And for that, I basically turn it off and always turn it off when I get in. Unfortunately, it doesn't stay off when you turn it off. Every time you turn the car off and back on, it'll kick that back on. So you have to turn it off every time you get in the vehicle. A little bit annoying. I know a lot of vehicles do it that way. So it's not really a huge deal. It's just something personal for me and the way that I drive this vehicle. My other big complaint about driving the Atlas, which is one of my biggest complaints about the Atlas, period, is the steering. Now it's not a huge issue and a lot of people probably wouldn't even notice it, but for me, I like heavy weighted steering, especially in big vehicles like this, where you're carrying your family and you wanna know that you're grounded and in control of the road. This has a little bit light of steering for my taste. I would like a heavier steering in here. The turning and maneuverability of the vehicle is just fine. I would just like a little bit heavier of steering, especially once you're up on the highway doing 70 miles an hour in a rainstorm, you want to know that you're planted on that road. So again, this two liter turbocharged engine isn't the fastest thing out there. And this thing is 4,222 pounds, something like that curb weight. But let's see how it gets on with a zero to 60. Dead stop and go. Sixty. Not terrible for a family vehicle. If there's one thing about being an automotive journalist and reviewing a different car every week, it's that you really have to enjoy your vehicle when it's time to get back in and drive the family around. Now, I definitely did not have that when I was driving the Dodge Grand Caravan. But ever since we've got this Atlas, it doesn't matter what I've been in, as soon as I get back in my car, I'm pretty happy with it. And it's good to know that even after driving the 2019 and this thing having a bit more options, I'm still very happy with my own vehicle. When I bought the Atlas, I never really thought I'd be a Volkswagen owner. I've always been a Ford person. I really like Hyundai. I've been accused of being a fanboy for Hyundai. I've owned the Hyundai Genesis Coupe. I still own a 2013 Hyundai Sonata, and I'm not going to lie, if that Palisade was out when I was buying the Atlas, I probably would have went with Hyundai as long as they gave me a good deal, but I don't regret buying the Atlas when I did. Again, it still serves my family really well, and it's a vehicle I enjoy driving, and I can't give a vehicle any more praise than that. Alright, 
So let's talk a little bit about the price and competition here. This is the base Atlas, which I'll give a shout out for Volkswagen. Not a lot of the manufacturers will give journalists their base vehicles for review, even though we ask for them a lot because they want to put you in the most premium, most uh, high dollar vehicle that they have. When it makes a lot of sense to be able to drive the base sometimes, because again, I bought the base. The only option that I have on my vehicle that's not in this vehicle is that V6 under the hood. So the price on this vehicle is $30,895. And if you go back to my video, putting your money where your mouth is, where I bought my vehicle, the list price on that was $32,000 but I actually walked off the showroom floor with it for 28,000. So a three row vehicle as big as this for $30,000 or under is an amazing deal for big families like mine. If you are wanting the V6 now, you have to get the all wheel drive, which has a base price just over $34,000. Now I actually just got back from driving the Hyundai Palisade. That video should already be out as well before this one comes out, but the base price on that was just at $32,000. Now I didn't get to drive the base car. We were only in the top trim cars but that is a vehicle that I'm also really excited about. But even then, this has a bigger interior volume than that one, although I really like both vehicles. You also have things like the Dodge Durango, which if you're wanting a V8 engine under the hood, that's a great option. You have the Nissan Pathfinder, which I think is a really good family vehicle, but again, is smaller in interior volume and a little bit more expensive than this. To get bigger than this vehicle, you really got to go to something like the Suburban, which is a lot bigger, but also at least twice the money. Again, I really like this thing. All right, guys, well, I hope you enjoyed this video. Leave me a comment down below. Let me know what you think about the Atlas and its competition in the market right now, especially if you have a big family or you need a big vehicle like this. Be sure to leave me a thumbs up if you enjoyed the video. And as always, thanks for watching. All right, guys, thanks for sticking around this far into the video. Be sure to go check out these other videos that we've got in our playlist. And thanks for watching.